So we talked about prisms yesterday. We named prisms based on their base, and then the fact that they have uh, rectangles for faces, that makes them a prism. So when we want to know what a regular prism is, that means that the bases are regular polygons. So this is the first thing that you're writing down in your notes. When they ask you to find the surface area of a regular polygon, you need to know what the heck we're talking about. So the faces, sorry, the bases are regular polygons. And then we need to know the difference between a right prism and an oblique prism. A right prism has a lateral edge that's perpendicular to its base. Its side, its face edges are perpendicular to the base, straight up and down. Whereas an oblique prism leans. So when you think of the leaning tower of Pisa, that's an oblique building. It leans to one side. Okay. Need a pencil. I got it. Okay. All right. So we're going to ask you to find surface area of things. We're going to ask you to find volume of things. So when we're trying to find the surface area, not yet. When we're trying to find the surface area, bless you, we're wanting to know how much material does it take to cover our prism. Okay? In other words, in this candy bar box, how much cardboard or paper does it take to make the box? So far so good? Okay. We have two kinds of areas that we'll talk about. One of them is the lateral area, and one of them is the surface area. The surface area means that we need to find all the cardboard for all the faces plus the bases. For this particular prism that I'm holding up here, we would need to take the length times the width of our rectangle, our faces, times three, because there are three of them. And then we would have to take half the base times the height, because the base of this is a triangle. That would give us one of them. And then we have to take it times two, because we have two of them. Absolutely. Okay? So when we're looking at this one, this is a, what kind of prism? Rectangular prism. Okay? So you decide you know, basically which is the base and so forth. But if we are trying to find the surface area, we want to know how much cardboard does it take to make this Kleenex box. Okay? So that means that you have to find the front and the back, and the top and the bottom, and the left and the right. Make sense? Okay? There's easier ways of doing this, though. So first of all, if we were trying to find the front, it's 14 by what? Six. So we need a 14 by 6 and a 14 by 6. How about the right? 4 by 6. Left is also going to be 4 by 6. How about the top? 14 by 4. And the bottom would also be 14 by 4. Okay, so we had to find three calculations and double them, right? which is not the most efficient way to find that. Okay? And we could we could do the math, but we're good, right? Keep moving. Okay? So if you do the math and work it all the way out, it ends up being 328 square centimeters. Okay? Now, here's the shorter way, the more efficient way. Okay. If we're trying to find the lateral area, meaning the, the area of the faces, then we're going to use a formula that says L equals pH. So L stands for the lateral area. This is the area of the faces. The P is the is capitalized because it's actually a perimeter. So you have to do some work with this. 
you have to calculate the perimeter of the base. And the H is the height of the prism. The height of the prism connects the base to the base, so this is H. How tall is the prism? Okay. So the first thing you do with these is you decide what's your unique or what's your special kind of base, right? Your special polygon. In this case, it's a triangle, right? So our bases are triangles, and our faces are all rectangles. Okay. When we want the total surface area, we have to take that same lateral area that we just found, and we have to add up the area of the two bases to it. Okay. And the B is capitalized because there's calculations involved. It's not just substituting a single number in. Okay. Look, you should be writing this down. Everybody ready for the next piece? Let's actually throw some numbers in here. Okay. So, to find the lateral area or the area of the faces, we have to find the perimeter of the base. So, our base is a triangle. Put it away. Or it's mine for the day. That doesn't mean finish your game. It means put it away. Thank you. The perimeter of the base is going to be the distance around one of these triangles. And they told us that two of the sides are 8. The third side is 11.3. So if we want to find the perimeter of this base, that means we need to add 8 plus 8 plus 11.3. So 16 plus 11.3, 27.3. That's our perimeter. What's the height of the prism? 7. Does everyone see that this is the height that we're looking for? That's the height of the prism. And when we take 27.3 times 7, what do we get? Let's have your calculators out, right? One. The, the 27.3, the perimeter times the height, should get you 191.1 inches squared. Area is measured in square units. So far, so good? Now, when you're finding the lateral area plus the two bases to find the surface area, there's no need to recalculate that. We already did. Make sense? So you just write this number in, 191.1. But now we have to add two capital Bs. The B is capitalized because we want to find the area of the base. So how do you find the area of a right triangle? Or any triangle, for that matter. Good. So our area of one base will be base times height divided by 2. 64 divided by 2 is 32. We need two of those. So 64. So when we add 64 plus 191.1, what do we get? So 55.1. And this is inches squared again. Exactly. In the triangle, yes. And instead of dividing by 2 and then multiplying by 2, it works to just ignore that because we're finding the area of a, of a prism that has two bases. Tomorrow when we talk about um, pyramids, though, we don't want to get into that habit because we'll, we'll have it wrong because it won't have two bases. Okay? Great question. Other questions for this? Okay, makes sense? Just subbing a lot of numbers in. Okay? 
All right, so here comes the next piece. What if we give you this figure instead? What kind of polyhedron is this? Trapezoidal prism, right? Okay, trapezoidal prism. So the base is a trapezoid, even if it's laid on its side or on its face, on its top, whatever you want to call it, the base is a trapezoid. Okay, so when we're trying to find the perimeter, we have to have to find the air, the perimeter of the base of the trapezoid. Okay, distance around that trapezoid. So they want us to find the lateral area and the surface area, and I'm kind of walking you through it on your sheet. Oops. Stay there. The lateral area is the perimeter times the height, and the total surface area is the perimeter times the height plus 2 times the area of the base. Okay? So, if we're finding the perimeter of this base, and it may be helpful to shade it or something so that you can kind of see what which one you're working with. So, if we shade that lightly without covering up the fix, how long is this segment right here? 12. And how long is this segment right here? That's 9. So you may have to put things together. They put them off to the side so they don't clutter up the center too much and make it hard to see. Okay? So we want the perimeter of this base. That means we're taking 12 plus 9 plus 8 plus 7. So 20 plus 16 is... These two make 20, so 36 is our perimeter of our base. Now be careful here, because the H is the height of the prism, not the height of the base. So which one is the height of the prism? 10 connects the two bases together. So this is the height you're looking for. It connects this base with this base. Okay, so 36 times 10, so we write 360, and then its units are, and we plop that 360 right here because we're going to use it again. Okay, now we've got to find the area of a base. How do we find the area of a trapezoid? There's two bases on this guy, right? So look at your... One half the height times the sum of the bases, right? Okay. So which one is our height of this of this trapezoid? The six. This is the height of our base. Okay. So six one half times six times twenty because twelve and eight are the bases. So three times twenty. Good. So we're going to get 60 for our area of our bases. Okay. And we have two of them. So a total of how much? 120 and 360. Four eighty centimeters squared. All right, make sense? Okay. Questions on this one? So it's not bad if you have your formula sheet, right, and know how to use them. Okay? All right, here comes the next one. Now we need to talk about volume. Okay? So volume is how much space something occupies. So if we want to know how much concrete and how much pool cover is necessary to make a swimming pool, how much you know, concrete will we, would we need to put in the ground, how much is the cover going to be, and so forth. That's the surface area. How much paint will we need to paint that, that pool? But if we want to know how much water is in the pool, we're talking about volume. Okay? How much plastic makes a soda bottle is the surface area. How much pop or soda is in the bottle is your volume. Make sense? Okay, so... The amount of space a solid occupies or takes up is the volume of that. How much cardboard it takes to make this box, surface area, how much 
candy is in the box is volume. Okay? So, many of you learned a volume formula in the past that suited you well because you did some very basic volume calculations. In that in your in your middle school setting, you did things like length times width times height. Does that make sense? Okay? Because you were only dealing with rectangular prisms. And when you have a rectangular prism, if you want to write V equals length times width times height, I will not count that wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? It suited you well back then. It will work for rectangular prisms now. Okay? So our new formula, though, will be the area of the base, capital B, means we had to do some work, times the height. Okay? So with this particular prism, what dimensions would you say are the base's dimensions. 12 and 4, if you want to call this your base, and that's perfectly fine, right? And then your height would be 6, right? So uh, my area of my base with a rectangle, we just take the length times the width. We're going to take 12 times 4, and then we're going to take that times our height, which is 6, and that will give us our volume of our prism, our rectangular prism. And the answer is 288. And then what's our label going to be? Centimeters. We took centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, so centimeters cubed. Volume is always cubed. Okay? So far so good? All right. Now, where that formula, the length times width times height, doesn't help us so well is in something like the next one, okay? But before, yeah, actually, I'll come back to it. Doesn't work so well when we've got something like this, right? Because is our base going to be found by taking a length times a width? No, okay? Now, Cavalieri's principle, you don't have to write this down. But all it's saying is that if two solids have the same bases, <coughs> excuse me, thank you, and the same height between those bases, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's regular or if it's oblique, right? It's still going to have the same volume. Think about a deck of cards. How many play Uno? Have you ever played Uno before? Okay. When we have that deck of cards and we push it off to the side a little bit so it's at a, at a slant, does that change the volume of the cards? No. They're going to have the same volume. Okay. One that's stacked straight up and down and one that's stacked to the side still has the same volume. That's Cavalieri's principle. Okay. So the volume is going to be volume no matter what, as long as they have the same base and they have the same height. Okay? All right, so here's another example of what we're doing to find the volume. Okay? I may have gone too far because I think I had one in here that had triangles. Let me check. Nope. All right, so easy peasy, right? Do we need to show this one? 2 times 5 times 4, okay, and then meters cubed, okay? But let's do this one, okay? Now we want to find the volume of this prism. What kind of prism is it? A triangular prism, okay? That means the base is a triangle, right? Okay, so we want to make sure that we're finding the perimeter of the base. So if it helps you to shade the base in so that you can see what you're working with, do that, okay? So, if we're trying to find the volume of this guy, we need to say the volume is the area of the base times the height. So, how do we find the area of a triangle? Okay, so base times height divided by 2. So, I look at this triangle, and I see this is 10. I see this is 12.5. I don't know this guy. So what do I have to do to find it? What kind of triangle is it? A right triangle. So if it's a right triangle, then the Pythagorean theorem works, right? So we would do... Good. Find your hypotenuse, isolate it so it's all by itself. 
They won't always give you something. They'll make you do some of the other work to get it. So 10 squared is 100. What's 12.5 squared? What's that one? 156.25? That sound right? Anybody got a calculator? Okay. So 156.25 minus 100 is going to get us 56.25. And we have to take a square root. So what do we get? 7.5. So 7.5 is this guy. And now we're ready to do base times height divided by 2. 7.5 times the height of the base, the height of the triangle, divided by 2. So what's 5 times 7.5? So 77.5, 37.5 is going to be our area of our base. So 37.5 times the height of the prism. Which one's the height of the prism? 8, because 8 connects the two bases together, right? So this is the height of the prism. So 37.5 times 8 is? 300, 300 inches cubed. Uh -huh. The 12.5 was the hypotenuse. This one? Yeah. No, no, that was supposed to be, yeah, supposed to be the hypotenuse. Other questions on this one? Okay, volume's a little easier, right? There's less to it, but you still have to find the area of the base. Okay, now I have two more examples. I don't think we want to go through them, right? I want to give you time to work. Shall we work the, start working the problems? Okay. So we have a PRISMS worksheet that's coming at you. These are so much easier if you can see them and work with them on paper. Not yet. We're going to work a couple problems together so you can see what kind of work I'm, lo I'm looking for. All right. So let's work a couple of these together. I want to show you the kind of work you should show. Okay. So on this first part, the front side, we're doing. Did I give everybody a copy? Everybody good? Everybody got a copy? Okay. The first side, we're finding the the total surf the lateral area and the total surface area. Okay. Now, humor me because tomorrow we start talking about cylinders, right? And we start talking about um, lateral surface area and volume of cylinders, okay? So it's going to be different formulas. And then the next day, Friday, we talk about perimeter, um, lateral surface area and volume of cones and pyramids, okay? So we want to start getting familiar with these formulas and using them properly. So the first thing we do is, even though th there's only one formula for a lateral area, we write it down. The lateral area of a prism is what? pH. So write L equals pH down. And then T equals pH plus 2B. So give yourself some space, and then we're going to have a T equals pH plus 2B. Okay. How do we find the perimeter of, first of all, which is the base? What's, what's the dimensions of your base? Four and four, so shade it so you can see that that's a base. 
Okay. Now, 4, 4, 4, 4, how much is that going to be? 16. So you don't have to tell me 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 or 4 times 4, right? Just tell me 16. But now, which is the height of the prism? 10. So put it times 10 beside it. And 16 times 10 is 160 feet squared. Okay? Now, put your 160 down here because we don't have to calculate that again. But now we have to find two bases. How do you find the area of a base of a, of a square? Length times base, base times height, length times width, side times side, right? So 4 times 4 is 16. So we need two of those 16s. So 36, 32, 32 and 160 is 192 feet squared. Okay, that's the minimum work I need to see. If you off to the side said P equals 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, that would be okay. Off to the side, if you said B equals 4 times 4, that's okay. But this is the minimum. Okay? Make sense? All right, let's look at the next one because it's a little trickier. What type of polyhedron do we have? Triangular prism. So your base is a triangle. Shade your base in so you can see what you're working with. Okay? We need to find... What's that? Um, and there won't be necessarily, it'll just be prism, it'll just say prism in general. It might look like a rectangular prism. So they won't have a octagonal prism or a hexagonal prism, it's just a general, general purpose. Okay? Alright, so to find the lateral area, we still have to write pH, L equals pH. Okay, humor me, it'll help you to put the numbers in. Now, perimeter of the base. What kind of triangle is this? Okay, it's a right triangle, okay, and it's got a 90 degree angle with 3 and 3 as the two legs. So this is going to be 3 squared to 2 for the hypotenuse because it's a 45, 45, 90 x x x squared to 2 so 3 3 3 squared to 2 so when we add these up 3 plus 3 is but plus 3 3 squared to 2 more is going to be 6 plus 3 squared to 2 and you can make that a decimal right what's the height of the prism 10 now, I don't have a calculator up here, so if you're quick with the calculator, you can tell me what 6 plus 3 squared to 2 is. <laughs> 3 and 6 don't combine because they don't both have a square root of 2. Square root of 2 is 1.4 something, 1.41 or whatever, times 3 plus 6. Ten point two. So ten point two times ten is going to be hundred and two for our lateral surface area. Okay. Now total surface area, write down pH plus two B one oh two plus two of these bases. And again, this is a triangle, so half the base times the height, right? Base times height divided by 2, and we're going to eventually take it times 2. So what's the base times the height here? 3 times 3, okay? So our area of our base is going to be 3 times 3 divided by 2, and then we're going to multiply it by 2. So we're going to get 9. So 102 plus 9. And then inches squared, because we were finding surface area. Okay? So we did two problems together. That's the kind of work I need to see. Okay? And it will help you, I promise. You will not be lost tomorrow. 
if you do it this way, and you won't be lost the next day if you do it this way. Okay? All right, giving you time to work.